It's a beautiful afternoon in the city of Dallas. If you don't know my name, my name is Oyi Consola Alabi. I work as the emotions doctor. I am a professional and I am a Christian. I am, however, not a Christian professional. They're two different things. I am a professional and I am a Christian but I am not a Christian professional. So the difference is Christian professionals have a right to attend to just Christians and also use the Bible as their tool and all of that. I do not attend to all Christians. I attend to everyone and anyone. In my world, people come as they are. I am a Christian. I am a professional. There are two different things. So I thought to make that clear, people come as they are to where I am. So I do not just use the Bible or when you come to me as a professional, the Bible is not my tool. The only time I use the Bible is when my clients prefer that I use the Bible. So I have numerous tools and several tools so i am not a christian professional so dear christians please at no point should you think that you want to monopolize me nobody reaches me except through a booking and then to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me starts from five thousand dollars intentionally because i prefer to work with a chosen few or a select number of people it's my preference I have a right to choose who I want to spend my time my expertise and my life with so professionally to engage me starts from five thousand dollars only and I choose who I desire to work you know with so let's start today's conversation today's conversation is titled how to profit from psalm 23 as a professional and as an entrepreneur please let me know if you're ready are you ready for this conversation how to profit from psalm 23 as a professional and as an entrepreneur let me know if you're ready in the chat room please also share where you are listening to this conversation from it is a naked and afraid Friday conversation that we have every Friday. We have this every Friday. So please let me know if you're ready, number one. Number two, please let me know what country you are listening to me from. It is the naked and afraid conversation that happens every Friday. 
how to profit from Psalm 23 as a professional and as an entrepreneur. So someone is listening to me from Canada. Please let me know where you are listening to me from, where you are listening to this conversation from, how to profit from Psalm 23 as a professional and as an entrepreneur. There's Pakistan in the house, there's Nigeria in the house, there's Canada in the house. I am representing Dallas, Texas. So Oinlola is also at Dallas, Texas. So where are you listening to this conversation from? How to profit from Psalm 23 as a professional and as a, an entrepreneur. Yes, thank you. Can you also see my pinned title, the title, somebody is in from Paris, another person in from the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining. Can you see the title? I pinned it here. Can you see the title? Please confirm. I typed the title out and I pinned it so that people will know what we're talking about. Please let me know if you can see it. I can see it again. I don't know what's going on from my side, but I can see it again. So please talk to me. Can you see the Zambia also in the house? Okay, so people can see the title. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So how to profit. Thank you. You can see the title. Thank you for confirming that. How to profit from Psalm 23 as a professional and as an entrepreneur. If it's your first time listening to me or joining the live session, thank you for joining the live session. So let's talk about it. Um, what I'm about to talk about is not a shortcut to wealth and it is also not a get rich soon, you know, it is also not like a scam. So it's not a get rich soon, whatever, you know, um, thing to do, not at all. This conversation is first of all, first of all, for believers. I'm not talking about religious people. I didn't say Christians. I didn't use any, you know, woke word. I am talking about believers. So this conversation, so this conversation is for believers and it is very intentional. So this conversation is for believers and it is very intentional. So I'm talking about people who have a relationship with God, not people who desire to get rich, um, not people who desire to get rich, you know, through a shortcut or use God and disappear. No, those are not the people that I'm talking about. Mm -mm. So I'm not talking about a get rich soon or yeah, get rich soon scam or let's just quickly do this thing. Let's do this. Let's do that. No, I'm not talking about that at all. I am talking about how to use Psalm 23 as a believer, how to use Psalm 23 as a believer, how to use Psalm 23 as an entrepreneur, how to use Psalm 23 as a professional and how did that did I get to this point? So, I like to read my Bible, and I do not read my Bible because because it is the right thing to do or whatever. I read my Bible because number one, I enjoy talking to God, and I enjoy seeing God in scriptures. Now, when I also read my Bible, I must say that I also see where human beings show up. I see the personality of the writers of the scriptures. I see the personality of the apostles and the disciples. So I separate those scenarios every time I have to read my Bible. What that means is that I know what God will say. And because I have an idea and I know his voice, I know how some things you know will be from the heart of the spirit of god and from god so sometimes when i read some things i know that 
the personality or something has covered some things up and I can differentiate. So I read my Bible as often as I can. I do not read my Bible every day, you know. I don't read my Bible every day, even though I wish I did, but I do not read my Bible every day. I don't tell lies. There's no reason to impress you. You ain't going to beat me. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. I don't read my Bible every day. Is it good to read your Bible every day? Surely, I do not know, but I do not. You know, so I'm just going to talk for myself. I don't read my Bible every day, but I read my Bible as often as possible. So I remember reading my Bible and when I read my Bible, I also see the heart of a father. I see my father talking to me, his child. So I started reading my Bible. So every year I try to read my Bible from Genesis to Revelation and I read it as I'm led. I read the chapters as I'm led. Some days I read a particular book of the scripture all through. So I can say, you know what, I'm going to read um, Genesis today and I'm done with the entire, um, what's it called, the entire chapters. I may go back there repeatedly, you know, to read it. So it really depends on what I decide to feast on and to concentrate on. So one of these beautiful days, I remembered Psalm 23 and the first thing that st um, struck you know, stuck out to me really. The first thing that stuck out to me was the statement, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, you know, and I sat down with the scripture and I started looking at it. And for me, let me tell you something. If something doesn't work for me, I'm not going to believe in it. If something doesn't work for me, I would not believe in it. I would not use it. So I am too self-aware to be pressured by anyone, to be pressured by anybody. You know, I'm not even interested in being impressed or impressing people. So I'm not going to mask or form or pretend. When I had a porn addiction about 10 years ago, I came out to talk about it. People were shocked. They were surprised. They were like, oh, pastors don't say this. I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I do not know how to pretend. I show up and I say the truth. I let people see the vulnerability. I let people know when I'm tired, when I am sad, when I'm crying. I let the people close to me know. I'm not interested in people seeing me as a messiah or an independent, whatever, whatever. I am not independent at all. I remember when I needed to do my immunization for some stuff I was doing here in the US and they told me they were going to give me four vaccinations. You know, as I entered the office I was supposed to enter in, you know, um, the lady, a nurse, I just saw a bowl of sweets. I just asked her if I could take one. And she was looking at me and I started shedding tears. <laughs> she was like, you cry for injections? I said, not exactly. But I just like this feeling right now. The feeling like, the feeling that I'm shedding tears. I like it. You know, leave my age alone. Don't harass me. I already know that I'm an elderly person. But I just want to cry. It's my cry. It's my tears. Why are you dragging my cry with me? Ah, you know, um, women don't cry, men don't cry, all those rubbish things. Is it your cry? Are you the one crying? Is it your tears? Did water finish in you? Is it your eye that is bringing out water? Are you the one they are injecting? Why are you dragging? I said I want to cry. I say, eh, it, you cannot cry. You, you are the emotions doctor. Madam, are you the one who gave me that emotion? I gave myself. And if I also want to cry, it's my cry. It's my cry reducing your portion of cry. Why are you dragging tears? What is going on? So I collected sweets and I said, I want to cry for vaccinations or injections at the same time. It's not the will of God. I'm not a hardened criminal. So they gave me the first sweet. I licked it. I took two injections. After the second injection, I asked for another sweet. The lady was saying, ah, as the sweet finished, the sweet has finished. Oh, madam, the sweet you gave me was for the first two shots. It has expired. If you don't want people to know that I want to cry, give me another sweet. Oh. So she gave me sweets and I was licking my sweets. And all my friends knew that I cried. 
my TS has something to do with my doctorate. He has something to do with doing the emotions doctor. He has something to do with my bank account. It's just TS. Why are you attaching importance to TS? Why are you attaching your status to TS? Share bad doom by if you live. Ah ah. So when I'm reading my Bible, me, I don't read my Bible like a woman of God trying to do one uh, what's it called? One deliverance session or something. When I'm reading my Bible, I tell God. I am a Christian by design. Now I may choose you. Do you understand? So I'm not an accidental Christian. It's not as if I was I, I was I, uh, I was doing something. I now branched into Christianity. Mogbomoya. I'm not doing Mogbomoya Christianity. You. I'm not an accidental Christian. I came with my chest to choose you and to worship you and to love you. And this relationship must work for us. And it's my relationship I'm talking about, not your own, no, because that's when you'll be dragging my relationship with me. It does know how to do it. I am not asking you for a template. It's me that I'm sharing my relationship with my own father. Siblings don't have the same relationship with their parents. So, <laughs> so I told God that if Christianity and this kingdom is working, it must work for me. So I want to understand how this is going on. What are the fundamentals of faith? And I'm not inheriting Christianity from anybody. I'm not doing what my pastor said and my pastor did not say. No, 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 no. I'm not inheriting Christianity. This one must work for me. So, I told the Most High, what is the hidden secret behind your scripture and your word? And then when I was reading my Psalm 23, I told him, open my eyes of understanding that I have eyes that see and ears that hear. Because I am a professional and I am a Christian. Like I explained earlier, I'm not a Christian professional. Don't add it together. Separate them. I am a full-blown Christian and a full-blown professional. I am not a Christian professional. That simply means... The Bible is not the tool I use in professionalism. I use all tools as long as they work. And when I say as long as they work, before you go and carry one room or that, uh, behind the scene, it is, it is tendy. You know, it is doing something. Now, man, no. If you are projecting what you are doing, that's on you. <laughs> you understand? I serve everybody. Come as you are. It's what's going on in my professional life. Every soul that you don't like, I serve them. Because I separate issues. If I was a pilot, will I be flying only Christians? If I was a surgeon, would I be performing surgery on just Christians? If I was a chef, will I be cooking for just Christians? Good. If I was a tailor, I would not be creating outfit for just Christians. So I serve everyone and I separate the issue. So Psalm 23, how to profit from Psalm 23? As an entrepreneur and as a professional. As a professional means you can have a job, you're an entrepreneur, whatever you are, how to profit from Psalm 23. So let's start with the scriptures. My laptop is here. I am reading what is here on my screen. So when you see my eye going like this, I am reading the scripture. I don't want to say it from my head because there are some other things written in between what I'm reading out to you. So let's start Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Let us break that down. Lord lord you can call lord in any um what you call it whatever um however you want to call it but this simply means yahweh is my shepherd jehovah is my shepherd interestingly my shepherd is also my father the spice on top is that my father is my shepherd my shepherd is my friend so i have three in one my father is my shepherd. My shepherd is my friend. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. What does the word shepherd mean? It means a lot of things, but I'm just going to read out what um, I see here. Meaning to feed and to tend the flock. Now, the responsibilities of a shepherd is, first of all, the shepherd is a friend to the flock. So you will most likely see that shepherds have a rapport with their sheep. So when I used to see um, these Hausa guys back in Nigeria tending their, I think they're called cows or something, yeah, taking their cows and all that, there's a relationship. 
there's a relationship with them if you actually even have a dog there's a relationship you have with your dog sometimes they call them by name back in nigeria we'll do something like <laughs> those humans are strange you know their names here I see that the dog owners have a relationship with their dogs. They actually have conversations, tell them to sit down, tell them to stand up, all of those things. So the relationship has given the capacity for friendship. So when you hear the Lord is my shepherd, my shepherd is my father, my shepherd is also my friend. Is also my friend. So if you say that the Lord, which is God, is your father, God is your friend, then the next word is, I shall not want. Like if God is your father, God is your shepherd, God is your friend, the next statement says, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I, O ye consoler, shall not want. So what does shall not want mean? It means I shall not lack anything that will cause failure, anything that will cause shame, anything that will cause disgrace. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. I shall not want. So I would not lack anything that will cause failure, that will cause shame, that will cause disgrace. If the Lord is my shepherd, I will not lack. I shall not lack. I shall not lack anything. I will not be lacking in anything that cause failure. I will not be lacking in anything that cause shame. I would not be lacking in anything that would bring embarrassment or disgrace or whatever that you call it. So if I am in lack, and if I'm experiencing some form of lack in my life, the first question I need to ask myself is, is the Lord my shepherd? Because the problem is never with God. The problem is the application and the execution. The problem is not the source. The source is permanent. The source says, I am your provider. The source says, I am your healer. The source says, I am your protector. The source says, I am the glory and the lifter of your head. The source says that every time you call upon me, I would answer you. The problem is never with the source. The source is permanent. His word is yea and amen. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So at no point is there a problem with the source. The source today, yesterday, tomorrow, and forever will always be what it is. So the source says, the Lord is my shepherd. I know who my shepherd is. The Lord who is my father, who doubles as my friend, is my shepherd. I shall not want so if i'm experiencing any form of lack or want i must go back to the drawing board i must go back to what is going on because like i said earlier on it is never a god problem it is always an application and an execution problem god does not have a problem blessing you if he blesses you with millions of dollars and billions of dollars he would never run dry he would never notice it you know the reason why he's the many-breasted one god does not do oh i can't bless eight billion people at the at the same time hell no he is the beginning and the end he never runs dry that's what Yoruba call it. You know, the deep that calls unto deep. If God blesses 8 billion of us, he's not going to feel it. He's not going to know. So God is not proving any point by seeing that you are in lack. God is not proving any point by seeing that you need something. God is not proving any point with your destiny that he's keeping you in lack. He's keeping you running hell or scatter. God is not doing squid game with you at all. 
He is available to bless you in and out of season. He is available to show up for you every time that he needs to show up for you. So when you hear, the Lord is my shepherd. Agboma Be is my shepherd. That one that never runs dry. The omnipotent, the omniscient, the omni everything. You know, that one that every time, every moment, in all currencies, is like he can bless you. If you want Naira, he has it. If you want dollars and pounds and euros and and whatever dirham or um, cities, whatever you call it, that is who your father is. So when you are in want, it means that there is something that is lacking in your life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Somebody says, Abu Butoyle do marry. When you hear the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It means Oluwa ni Olu Shoa Gutomi. E mikiyo shea laini. Oluwa ni Olu Shoa Guton. Olu Shoa Guton is a covering. Oluwa ni Olu Shoa Gutomi. E mi o e mikiyo shea laini. Do you understand? He makes me lie down in green pastures. We're going somewhere. So anytime you taste lack, anytime you perceive lack. Anytime you touch luck, you need to go back to ask yourself a question. Who is your shepherd? Social media may be your shepherd. <laughs> yes. TikTok may be your shepherd. Twitter may be your shepherd. Your motivation may be your shepherd. YouTube may be your shepherd. Who is your shepherd? Because for you to have an understanding of who your shepherd is, you must understand the voice of the shepherd. Let me tell you something. There are some things that are not permitted to happen in my life. You know the reason why? Because by design of who my father is. There are some people who may never be broke. I actually want to say who can never be broke in their lives. Children of billionaires will find it hard to be broke. Like there's a level of wealth you will have that no matter what you buy, for you to be broke will be something else. So there are some things that are not permitted to happen in my life. It's my life I'm talking about. I don't know about yours. So I don't want you to now go, mm -mm, it's my life. There are some things that I know are not permitted to happen in my life just because of who my father is. You know when people say, do you know who I am? Yes. When I show up somewhere, I show up like lightning and thunder because I carry divine cargo. When I show up, I show up with his voice. When I have to teach or preach or coach or counsel or, or for therapy, whatever that I have to do, I am conscious of the voice of God that I carry. I am conscious that my voice, as I say it, I see it. I am conscious that I operate in the garment of healing. I am a global healer. So anywhere I show up, whether virtual or in person, anywhere that I show up, I show up as a representative and an ambassador of the Most High God. The one that all kings bow to. The one that all lords, that they call the Lord of all lords. They bow to, they defer, they worship, they announce. When they say, announcing the arrival of so, 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 and so. When you hear his excellency, this one is not just his excellency. This one embodies everything. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Every time you want as an entrepreneur and as a professional, the first question is to ask yourself, who is your shepherd? And I'm talking to Believers, I'm not talking to churchgoers, religious people, all those ras, um, woke voices. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm separating issues today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm talking to people who are directly connected to God, who talk to God. I am talking to people who understand what it is to have God as their father. Every time you are in want, you must hold God by the neck. Oh, you must hold him. You know when Jacob said, I'm not going to leave you until you bless me. You will hold God by the neck. And it's not by shouting at him when you're praying. God doesn't have a problem hearing you. He's not stubborn. So it's not as if you're trying to change his mind. Hell no. He's not a stubborn God. He's not waiting for you to change his mind. All of those things. Not at all. Not at all. 
So when something is not working for you, when you are an entrepreneur, a professional, anywhere you show up, when you are a sheep and God is leading you, you must follow the directions of the shepherd. When God gives you an instruction, do you follow it or do you try to negotiate it? Because anyone you do not listen to does not owe you any blessing or owes you any honor or whatever. No. If you cannot honor his voice, then you cannot even hold him responsible for a lot of things. If you are an ambassador of God, do your clients understand that you are a child of God? And it's not by you announcing it. It's by them knowing that there's something different about this person. This person carries something that I'm trying to understand. It is not that they pay you for a job, you don't deliver the job, you insult them after paying you, you disappear, you ghost. You know, all of those criminal behaviors, hell no, those are mm -mm -mm, not at all. When they give you an assignment to do at work, do you do it like a child of God? Do you deliver when you're supposed to deliver? And when you cannot deliver, are you normal enough to say that, oh, I'm sorry, please give me 24 or 48 hours extra and explain to them? Those are the people that I'm talking to today. Those are people, I'm talking to people who are doing things right. I am talking to people who are doing things right and who are, do, are trying to remain good and to ensure that they don't compromise. That's what this conversation is about. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm talking to people who are trying as much as possible not to compromise in a crazy, crazy world. People who know that when they are paid for a service, they deliver the service. When they are paid for a product, they deliver the product. People who know that excellence is not a choice, excellence is our logo. And I'm not talking about perfection. Excellence is our logo. People who understand the place of humility, the place of kindness, the place of compassion, the place of patience. Yes. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It means I will not be lacking in any good thing. I would not be found lacking in anything that will finally bring me shame and embarrassment and disgrace. So Yahweh is my shepherd. I will not be lacking. If I am lacking in anything, if you are listening to me today, you have an emotional lack, a financial lack, a physical lack, whatever lack that you have, please go back to Yahweh. Go back to your drawing board and say to him, Daddy, I apologize for trying to outrun you. I apologize for going with my intellect. I apologize for not listening to you. I apologize for honoring social media more than I honor your voice. I apologize for acting like I'm not normal, like, oh, I'm a baboon. I live in the zoo. I apologize. I apologize for doing wala, 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 wala. I'm a baboon. I live in the zoo. I apologize. And here I am strolling back home to say, I want to get things done. I want to get things right. Let me tell you something. One of the reasons why some of us are not excelling and succeeding is because you are trying so hard to perform on a job or on a role where you were not designed to perform. Let me tell you something. I know my strengths. When it comes to talking, you can wake me up from my dream and I will talk for days without preparing. I will talk for days. As I am, I'm a walking institution, a walking encyclopedia. I will talk for days. I write pretty well, but I prefer to speak. And I know my strength. My strength is designed around global healing, whether spiritual healing or emotional healing or financial healing, anything that you tie to healing, that is where I am. You will never see me function in accounting. If I try it, I will struggle. If I try it, I will be found wanting. You will not see me anything close to engineering, architecture, all of those bogus words. You will not see me there. One of my closest friends is in logistics. I see you, Rama. One of my closest friends is in logistics. You will never see me there. You will only find me 
in the area of my strength just like we say in emotional intelligence fish don't talk about water you know the reason why because fishes don't even know they are in water until they are out of water so for you not to be found wanting you must first of all be in your area of grace some of us are walking in our area of disgrace yes that is the reason why you are not manifesting you are walking in your area of disgrace you are walking in that place where you know nothing it is not your strength you have tried to learn and learn and learn let me tell you something there is something you were designed for a pencil was designed to draw so that you can also erase it is different from what a pen will do a microphone was designed to use to speak you can't use a microphone as a vibrator except you want to die do you understand you were designed for something totally different some of us are struggling because we're not in our area of design you are not in your area of grace you are in your area of disgrace. Let me tell you something. No matter how intelligent I think I am, I know myself so well. If I try anything in the accounting spirit, all this CFA, FFA, and chartered accountant, all those English words that they use, if I try it, I will be in my area of disgrace. When I see mass like this, mass looks to me like coloring. It's like horror film. Numbers, all of those things look strange to me my phd or whatever will not function in accounting i will look at this like this and i will be messing up big time and they will keep wondering what is going on what is going on is because i am not in my natural zone so all of this let's hustle mogba moya let's do everything at all at all i am bad pass all of those things some of them or most of them will lead to disgrace when I got to the US, people were saying, oh, are you going to pick a job or are you going to try and do this and do that? And I'm like, I don't have a problem with money. Money comes to me naturally. I do not have a problem with money. Money comes to me naturally. You know why? Number one, I always function in my area of strength. Number two, when I get to my area of strength, I only sell to desperate people. Desperate people will pay you any amount of money to solve their pain, their massive pain, and their problems. Those are the people that I cater to. is by choice. is by design. And that's the reason why my fees are in thousands of dollars. I don't serve everybody. I only serve people in massive pain, people who are desperate for healing. And at the mention of my name, I show up. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you find yourself lacking and in want, we need to go back to the drawing board. And the drawing board is, number one, is the Lord your shepherd? Number two, are you obeying the voice of your shepherd? Are you listening to him? Or is the voice of what people say louder than the voice of your instructor number three are you functioning in the industry and the role and the position you're supposed to function let's continue he makes me lie down in green pastures that is the resting position of a sheep in a state of relaxation that implies that predators will not come near he makes me lie down in green pastures, lie down, relaxation, a state of relax relaxation, a resting position that is clear that I am relaxing and I'm resting because my shepherd is at the gate. My shepherd is walking like a vigilante. My shepherd has covered me up like a mosquito net. My shepherd is taking care of me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He, in green pastures, meaning it springs from the soil. It is fresh. I am relaxed and everything that I do, green pastures, the food staple of the flock, it is fresh. That's my home. I am relaxed. He leads me gently, carefully, 
to protection and sustenance. Beside, which is a preposition upon or over something. So the Lord, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. A quiet place of rest. A quiet place of rest. That's what happens when God is your shepherd. I'm going somewhere. He restores my soul. Restoration means he returns to me. So that means even the years that the locusts and canker worms have eaten, if the Lord is your shepherd, no matter your country, he restores to you, he returns to you, he just ensures that nothing is broken, nothing is missing. He restores your soul. Your soul is your source. You are refreshed. You are getting back to freshness. He leads me. He guides you even to an unfamiliar place. When I had to relocate, the Lord is my shepherd. Even in the US, the Lord is my shepherd. When clients reach out to me for a service, I ask God, what is the magic that they need? What is the healing that they need? Whether personal or corporate or government. What is that joker that I am to them? What is that solution that when I render it to them, they will know that something different happened? He leads me in the path of righteousness because there are series, there are several other paths that are not the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, the path of truthfulness, the path of correctness, for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I live in the U.S., I fear no evil. Because my father is my rock. My father is my staff. My father is my rod. Dear professionals and entrepreneurs, if you genuinely want to succeed as somebody who is kingdom-minded, you must follow the script. You can't follow wokeness. The reason why we have what is called scriptures is because we are following a script. There are fundamentals to what we are doing. Let me tell you something. It is only God that will lead you to a place where he will give you wealth and he will add no sorrow, no disgrace, no shame. And then he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You don't have to know that they are your enemies, but your shepherd is there protecting you. Your shepherd is there covering you. And then he anoints your head with oil. Oil, dear my head. Your hands are blessed because of who your shepherd is. And then you run it over. I say to people, in and out of season, I do not struggle to get money. I do not struggle to get clients because the Lord is my shepherd. He opens my eyes every day to show me where the money is. And I am dedicated to him. I pray without ceasing. If you see me praying in my house, sometimes I'm working on a proposal and I'm speaking in tongues. Lord, open my eyes of understanding what must be included, what must be deleted. When I send the proposals, I send it with prayers. Before sessions, I hand over my clients to God and I say to them, you are the one that designed and created them. Open my eyes to understand their past. Let me understand where they are in their present. Reveal their future to me. Whatever they are going through, I hand them over to you. And any wonder, my clients are not just blessed, they are also a blessing. They are going up and about evangelizing my existence, letting people know that you know what i have found a light of the world she is a city that cannot be hidden they ask for my account number and i say you know what ed i just want to say thank you i want to bless you thank you for restoring my marriage thank you for restoring my health thank you for restoring my relationship when cancer shows up i pray for them because the lord is my shepherd and i have the capacity to extend my covering when there's a problem i pray for them because the lord is my shepherd i can extend my covering because because I know who I am, I know whose I am, and I function according to the script. 
entrepreneurs and professionals, you have no reason to be broke and broken. Because you know what? We have protocols. The protocol members and your security members are called goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy follow me up and about. When I wake up, I stand up from my room into my bathroom. Goodness and mercy are, be are, are behind me. When I step out to drive, goodness and mercy are in the car with me. When I show up at the restaurants, goodness and mercy are there. When I show up anywhere at, a, at an organization, goodness and mercy are there. When I show up virtually, goodness and mercy shows up with me. Everywhere that I go, my eternal protocol, my permanent security, goodness and mercy follow me all oh, the days of my life they don't follow me just in africa they don't follow me just in europe they don't follow me just in the u.s they follow me everywhere that i go but let me tell you something you would never activate this power if you don't even know how much you are losing every time you don't activate the power of god Every time you don't activate the power of God over your life, you're losing money. And when I say activate the power of God over your life, I'm not saying just be praying up and down. I'm not saying, well, God cannot do just this. We're gonna... Those things are good, 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 good. I believe in them. Yes. But I'm just saying that don't just, why not just going up and about rattling? No. You are taking charge. Because guess what? You are higher than the angels. You were made in the design and the image of the genius and the most powerful. Do you understand what that is? When you show up at your office, show up like the spirit that you are. I don't mean go and be reading your Bible there and be stressing everybody. Yeah, I'm a Christian, I carry power. You don't have to announce. People will know. They will just know that there's something different about you. They will know that there's something different about you. I remember one day, a friend of mine... Um, invited me to follow her, accompany her somewhere. And we go to the place, she was the guest speaker. But the host knows me, and then the host says, oh, emotions doctor, you're here, blah, 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 blah. Let's give you um, 10 minutes to speak and all of that. And I picked the microphone and I was talking. And as I was talking, in less than 10 minutes, the whole atmosphere changed. I know the irony of it is, when we finished, the host said something to me. He said, you speak with so much authority and you carry so much power. And I was wondering, how can I not carry so much power? Do you know who my damn father is? Are you serious right now? Let me tell you something. My father is higher than a transformer. He's higher than the biggest generator. He's higher than a solar panel or an inverter. Whatever you guys call all those things. No. Do you know what it is for you to step on electricity when it's raining? You know what they call it? You get electrocuted, you die. And if people die from electrocution, it is small, small electricity or small electricity. Small electricity, but that small electricity was not designed to reside in our body. That is the reason why we are shocked to death. So if small electricity kills people now imagine a god that is higher than an inverter or a solar panel or a transformer or a generator do you know what that is all power belongs to him that means every other power that is going up and about they are copy and paste there's a song that says all other gods they are the works of men you are the only one for me all other gods they are copy and paste they are photoshop you are the only. i mean when it shows up every other power bows that is who your father is so you are missing a lot when you are not charging that energy in your work you are missing a lot when you are not charging that energy as an entrepreneur. You are not charging that energy as a professional. Let me tell you something. The world is in so much pain because the healers are asleep. I will say that again. The world is in so much pain because the healers are asleep. 
The healers are trying so hard to be work. The healers are trying so hard to show up and, you know, just have all of the accent and just be everywhere. The healers are trying so hard running after money. But let me tell you something. When you seek first the kingdom of God, even in your business, in your industry, on your job, every other thing shall be added unto you. I have tested it before and I'm testing it again. And I'm teaching and telling you what is working for me. You are losing goddamn money when you show up on your job just your natural self guy you are supernatural put on the super <laughs> put on the super like you're wearing a jacket put on the super do you understand activate it start the super turn on that car key in you when you're going for a presentation go with the power of god and that means that you must know what you're doing. This only works for the diligent. This only works for people who are kingdom conscious. It's not working for people who are looking for how to use God and, you know, just jamma, 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 just hit and run ATM. No, no. This only works for people who are conscious of who their father is. I'm not talking about religious people. No, no, that's not today's message. Mm -mm. Do you understand? You must wake up every day and say, it, Lord, I put on your voice. <laughs> Lord, I put on your voice. When they call healers across the world, I am a global healer. Emotionally, I am a global healer. Financially, I am a global healer. Psychologically, I am a global healer. I am a city on a hill that can never be hidden. I do not stand before normal people. I stand before kings. I stand before decision makers. I stand before presidents. I am a consultant to nations. I'm a consultant to governments. Those are the things that I say. And as I say it, I begin to increase my diligence. I don't say it and go to bed. I don't say it and say, oh, I've prayed God will get it done. No, that's spiritual yahoo yahoo. It will be irresponsible of God to do everything for you. It will be irresponsible of God to do everything for you. Professionals and entrepreneurs, the reason why we need healing in the world like never before is because the healers are asleep. The healers are are forgotten that they were designed to heal. The healers are trying to be woke. The healers are trying as much as possible looking for money everywhere. But let me tell you something. You are going to play your part in this script. It will be irresponsible of God to do your part for you. It will be irresponsible of God to create you and not have any expectation of you. Do you understand? So I hope you understand if the lord is your shepherd and you are in want the question is are you sure the lord is your shepherd if you are sure number two are you listening to the voice of your shepherd or you are instructing or attempting to instruct your shepherd number three if you are in want you must go back because this says, surely goodness and mercy are my protocol officers. Surely goodness and mercy are my security officers. They shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is something in your heart. The house of the Lord is your temple, your spirit, your soul, and your body. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. If money is not chasing you, you have to go back to the scriptures. You have to find out and say to yourself, I must study this thing to the point where money starts to chase me. I know at least 30 Christians, 30 kingdom minded people that money is chasing. They're the ones who will say, I am fully booked. Please wait for the next six months. People will still say, let me pay. I will wait. Because you know what? There's a difference. They understand what they carry. If you are in want, we need to suspect who your father is. And if you are in want, we need to suspect if you are listening to your father and if your father is your friend. God is constant. God is always there. He is permanent. But are you permanent? 
Or do you just take some money, once you get the money, you disappear? You go and do pepper then when you are broke, you return. That one is spiritual, you are wuze. You ain't gonna work. There's a price to pay to host God. There's a price to pay to host God. There's a price to pay to host God. There's a price to pay to be God's friend. You can't just say, I am a friend of God. Yeah, we got you. Friendship comes with intimacy. Friendship comes with relationship. Friendship comes with listening to instructions, conversations, listening to feedback, all of those things. I am excelling in my life. God is my shepherd. And I need you to also excel or improve what you're doing. I need all of us to bow together like the kingdom builders that we are. Enough of Christians always available for giveaway. You are the one who should be giving. You know they tire you. You are always in people's DMs asking for giveaway. Haba, go back to the drawing board. If all other things are not added onto you, then you ask yourself a question. Am I seeking first the kingdom of God? It's not about church attendance or church registration. It's about understanding how to apply principles and execution. You can't be everywhere for a giveaway now. Christians, you are the one who should be giving. You can't be everywhere looking for freebies and the guys is saying, you are supposed to bless us. No. No. Even the Bible is for sale. Even the Bible is sold. You know why? They print it. It costs money to print. You want to be paid on your job. You don't want other people to be paid. You are smoking something, man. You are doing, yeah, something is wrong with you, baby boy. So, dear Christians, show up on your job as a professional and the entrepreneur that you are. Carry that power. Do you understand? Unbelievers have trust in their intellect. They trust their intellect. Do you know what it is to be the world richest? Something must be working in you. I'm not a fan of Elon Musk like that, but I can't despise what he carries. Something is working. He has repeatedly, he used to own PayPal, you know, and several other things. You can't tell me that he doesn't know what he's doing. You have a level of jealousy and envy to say Elon doesn't know what he's doing. You are very delusioned. You that you know what you are doing. Who knows you? He said, uh, all he has is money. Have the money first. Let's now know what will be left. Have the money first. You can't say Elon does. He can be making mistakes and be messing up. I totally agree with all of that. He's, he can be very irrational. You know, those uh, scoins, scoin. Yeah. But you cannot envy him. Mm -mm. There is something he's doing well. I don't have a problem buying Twitter. I was um, verified earlier. I don't have a problem buying blue tick or yellow tick, whatever the tick is. Twitter gives me value, so I will pay for it. When I when I give people value, I want to collect my money. So I don't have a problem paying for other people. He said, for me, I don't you have you have a right not to pay, and I have a right to pay. I choose to pay because I receive value from Twitter and I will pay Twitter back. You can't be praying that God should bless the work of your hands and you are harassing other people. Hapa. When I get value, I pay for it. So Christians. You cannot be in lack. It is not by design. Your source is intact. Our Father is the provider and the one that covers us. You can't be saying, eh, no bear, no bear, no bear. It is a reflection that something is wrong. Do you understand? You can't be everywhere for freebies and in people's DMs, all of those things. No. You cannot. You cannot. So before you jump on the next giveaway or before you slide into people's DMs or be begging for money, go back to the drawing board. You can't be saying, eh, eh, no. There's a way we are supposed to carry ourselves and it's not by packaging. No. Let me tell you something. When you see a list, they don't tell you, if you see Yagba Kona, won't you be scared? You know why? Even from the movie, she acted the movie so well that you think it's real. If you see Peter Doche in real life, won't you be scared? I went to Enugu to visit Chief Peter Doche. I was with him for two days. 
the first day like this, I was texting everybody that I knew in case you can't find me again. This is the last destination I, I, I am at. He acted his role so well that I got scared. There are some people that have acted, they are moving so well that in real life, if you see them, you will still be scared of them. That's the power they carry, your visual power will move you so. If you see patients as awkward in real life, won't you be scared? You first of all be scared of self before she greets you well. If you see Kanayo, Kanayo in real life, won't you be scared? That's how much they embodied their roles. Have you embodied your father like that? Have you embodied their God? Your God like that? You don't carry yourself in here. You don't carry yourself in You don't carry yourself in here. No. Embody God. When you embody God, hey, 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 my God, you will see money. You will see influence. You will see impact. And when I say see money, I'm not talking about being the world richest. No. You will show up where it matters. Your name will be mentioned where it matters. Your enemies will grow. Leave those ones. They will germinate. No concern you. But the money you will make, eh? You will be a blessing. You will have more than enough. In fact, you will not be able to remember where you started from. But, ah, ah, I used to be broke. There's money in scripture, so there's wealth in scriptures. There's healing in scriptures in every area of your life. There's progress. Go and follow the script. 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 It's time for offering. Follow the script, my people. Entrepreneurs. Enugbe cannot be your slogan. Enugbe cannot be your watchword. You cannot be saying yeah, there's inflation in town. It's not your business. You're not a futurist. Go and face your work with the one that gave you the work. Lord, open my eyes of understanding. Give me this nation. Give me this industry. Give me this nation. Give me this industry. Give me this state. Give me this niche, oh God. Give it to me, Jehovah God. Enugbe means the mouth is dry, no money. Go on, focus. Go back to the drawing board. You cannot be talking to God just once a week and be expecting to do exploit. To. Eh, when you hear Dusi Oyeko, Nathaniel Bassi, Victoria Orenzi, um, Joshua Selman, when you hear those people, Mercy Chingo, Ebuka songs. I'm trying to remember. Sometimes we will forget. Sinach, Frank Edwards. When you hear them worship, does it look like what they do once a week? Eh? Does it look so? Everything you are looking for is in the scriptures. I have found it. I'm looking for them again. Because this world, <laughs> we run the streets together. <laughs> we will run the streets for the most high. If you don't have money, your experts will be limited because the people giving you money will control you. That's why there's a budget for sin. Ashiri, man of God, that's my guy. If you didn't an MC, Ashiri is there for you representing God. Do you understand? Carry God. If you know how much I pray for my clients, you will join them. Some days I just begin to fast for them and pray. Because I am invested in their life. Do you understand? I am invested in their life. I love them so much. If anything happens to them, it will bother me. So I don't want it to bother me. Okay, me Abudu, I see you. That's my guy. We've been friends in secondary school. Do you understand? You must pray for your clients because when they prosper, you will prosper. I pray for my clients. Three of my clients had cancer. I said, not on my watch. I am not permitting you to die. When they told me, I said, not on my watch. The three of them started chemotherapy abroad. It was the doctors that told them they can't find the lump again. Even me that prayed, I was shocked. Two were in London, one in the... They can't find the lump. We were praying. I said, God, not on my watch. Not on my watch. I am not releasing them to death. 
I don't know any death that is hovering around you, no know, concern me. But as for me and my clients, as for me and my clients, I am not releasing my clients to death. Oh, I am not releasing. Devil, hear me and hear me well. I'm not negotiating, I'm not suggesting. I am instructing and I am commanding by the virtue of who my father is. Hear ye the voice of God. Because scripture says at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. It's not at the mention of my name. My name is not bowing to you. Do you understand? I said, you know what? I am not releasing my clients to you by divine association. They are not permitted to die except they get to old age. I did not sign up to be a healer, to be attending funerals. No. I am not a healer at funerals. I am a healer in life. And life and death are in the power of the tongue. So I hear, hear ye the voice of God. To be my client is hungry people. Because they know that with ED in your corner. It don't finish. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. So Christians kingdom kingdom minded people i'm not talking about religious people who are stressing people mm -mm, i know they follow now just kingdom minded people i know they have told you so many things about the bible the bible now looks to you like it's not working you are suspecting it it's not looking like if the word of god is really true it should be working my dear it's not once you brush and you don't have mouth odor you brush daily you don't have your bath just once to avoid body odor sometimes you have your bath twice daily we have tried it. I've been a Christian since 1999. Do you understand? 24 years ago. I know what is working and what is not working. And if it's not working, I will tell you. We want be one more and meaning they have lied to us, they have deceived us. Me, I don't have time. I have tried other religions before. I tried two. It did not enter. It's entering for people that is entering for. It's me, it did not enter for. And I did not mention them. So if Christianity is not working, I will come out and say it. Be whoa, scam real. This one is a spiritual scam. But when I read my Bible, I ask the Holy Spirit to interpret. So it's not just what he wrote there. He wrote. When I read my Bible, I ask for the length and breadth and the depth and the etymology, the history of everything I need to know. Because if God is not working, I will resign and unsubscribe. But God works. God works no matter what is happening in the world. God works, but you must work it. You must work it. There are some things we do daily, we don't have a problem with it. You use your phone daily, you buy data, you eat daily, you brush your teeth, you brush your mouth. When it now comes to praying and reading your Bible, we now be acting as if we want to have epilepsy. Ah, ah. I bear ring, huh? See something. So, I release you by the power of the Most High. I'm about to go and eat breakfast. I hope this was a blessing to you. It will be on my YouTube page and on this Instagram page. And as usual, please spread the gospel. We need more healers. We need pilots that are healers. We need nurses and doctors that are healers. We need accountants that are healers. You know, we need dress designers that are healers. We need healers to show up. We need MCs. We need moderators. We need healers everywhere. We need healers everywhere. The world is in need of healing. A hug, a smile, credit alert. You can't even give people money when you don't have. You cannot be a Christian and be going up and about receiving giveaway. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Doctor of receiving. No. And don't tell me they don't have anything. It's not true. What is in your hand? If it's 1,000, send it to that person that has been a blessing to you. Go and send $100, send $1,000, send it. There's nobody that has ever blessed me in life that has not chopped my money. If you know how many account numbers are with me, you will think that I'm doing fraud. I am always sending money. As you bless me, you will be blessed. You can't just be saying, ah, thank you. It's a blessing. Go and subscribe to their channels. Watch their videos. Watch the ad. Because when you watch adverts, that's where you, they get money. Watch the ad. Subscribe to their channels. Look for them everywhere. Contribute to their success. 
After all, you want to succeed. If you want to succeed, you will help others succeed. Do you know how much sacrifice it costs me to show up here every Friday? Every Friday, I will show up here to teach for free. I'm not even selling badges. Badges will return in July. So this is totally free. Every Friday, I will show up here. You know why? Because as I help people, I progress, I increase. That's what you should do also. Stop sliding into DMs, begging for things. That's not how you were designed. That's not how you were designed. You can't say your father owns the length and breadth, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and you don't have any portion of the earth. Ah, ah. Come and help me, come and help me, come and help me. My friend, help yourself. Go back to the drawing board. I bless you and I release you. Well, to the hands of God, I'll see you next week Friday. I don't know what I'm talking about next week Friday. God is going to tell me what I'm talking about next week Friday. But as for today, we spoke about how to profit from Psalm 23. And I told you, ensure that the Lord is your shepherd. Ensure you follow the voice of your shepherd. And anytime you are in want, go back to your shepherd and ask him, what must I do differently? Why am I not prospering? What should I tweak? What should I edit? What should I add? Who must I know? I joined an association yesterday, it was $250. Some of you need to join associations, you need to join tribes, you need to join fellowships because the people who refer you are there. The people, just one text message, just one phone call can be what you have been praying for for years. Somebody will just say, oh, I know this person, please help me help this person. And that's the end. Your five-year-old prayer Maybe in a fellowship you are refusing to join. Say, I will join fellowship. Da, 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 da. You have been praying since. Do you know how many fellowships I pay to join? I'm in about seven fellowships. So some, one, I even pay $3,000. Do you know how many fellowships I'm in? We pay to join fellowships and associations. They are not free. When you hear fellowships and associations, they are not free. Go and find out. You are looking for free everywhere. You think we do business on Instagram? I charge from $5,000 from $5, above. How many Instagrammers pay me $5,000? And I charge it consistently. 10K, 15K, 20K, 40K, 50, 100. How many Instagrammers pay me? They are in the associations. You are refusing to pay money to join you. I said I should tell you. May not be like Corey. Go and join associations. Go and join where people have sense. Don't just join prayer groups. Prayer groups are good. Worship groups are good. Go and join business groups. Join professional groups. Go and drop money. I don't have money. When I have enough, how old are you now? You have not had money since. You are already 35. When you have enough, when? That enough you are praying for is with somebody in that group. I paid $250 meal to join one group, one business group in Nigeria. I'm even in the U.S. I have groups in the US that I joined. I have groups in the UK that I joined. I have groups in Nigeria. I have groups in Africa that I paid money to join. $3,000, two, five, one dollars 1800 kinikon, kinikon. That's how we pay dollars. So. But you are here whining me. Why will I pay? Why will I pay? Okay, what you are praying for, that breakthrough you have been looking for, is two people away from you. Everybody you want to know in life, you are two people away from them. One person will call another person. That's the end. Every breakthrough you are praying for in life, you are two people away from them. Once you reach the first person, the first person will call the decision maker. That's the end. But how will you reach the first person if you are not even in the right place at the right time? Maybe next week we should even talk about how to network as a professional and enter entrepreneur. Some of you are squeezing. The only money you have, you will still not drop it. The money is not increasing. Bank is even stealing some. They are removing every time. They will remove, remove, remove. It has even reduced from what it's supposed to be. It's okay to save, but you must pay your way. The gift of a man will make room for you. You must sow some seeds, and it's not in the size. You must sow some seeds that will be door openers. You will... Some people will receive one ladder. They will say, "What do you want?" 
I'm believing God for something. And one phone call, one text message, that thing you are believing God for is right in front of you. Somebody has given me 2,000 naira before or something. Via DM, just ask for my account number. Normally, I won't even give. But just for me, you know, be like, say, I won't, you know, you're acting proud. You gave the guy. I think he was too keen. I asked him what he was doing. He just told me in person. And then one day, somebody needed the service he mentioned to me and I sent him a message. I said, I'm going to refer you for this thing. My name is very important to me. Ensure that you do it well. Because if you don't do it well, OT law, meaning I will use you for ritual. I don't mean the normal ritual you know, I'm just joking. Before you say it is a ritual, it's a joke. So he, he thanked me. He didn't even know how much. By the time they gave him the gig, it was not less than a million. Trust me, if you had never given me that 2000, the 2000, honestly, I didn't need. And when I say honestly, I didn't know, you know, I don't spend naira. Yes, that's what I mean. So I usually dash it out. So it's not as if it's arrogance. No, no, because you will not come. No. But that 2000 gave him over a million. I'm telling you. There was another one that blessed me one day. And there was another job that was opening. And I knew how much they wanted to pay. So I told her, I will recommend you. She was very, you know, good girl, very diligent young girl. So I recommended her. And I told her that, how much do you usually do this job? She told me, I said, increase your value because I want you to increase your price. Increase your value because I want you to increase your price. She increased her value and I told her how much to bid for. And they paid her. It was the highest she's ever earned. But guess what? I think it started from 10,000 Naira blessing. I'm not saying all of this because, no, I'm just telling you. The gift that you are holding on to and putting under your pillow is your breakthrough. I have cleared out my account severally to tap into some strange grace. I be strange grace is then eh, one of the two. Christians, I leave you by the verses. I've been saying I leave you since. Ah, ah, ED. See you next week. I love you. See you next week, darlings. See you next week. I love you. Thank you. Thank you.